Hello, welcome back. My name is Dr. George Machaki, and this is Retail Merchandising, Retail Slash Management, uh, Marketing 106, offered by Harper College. We're going to be uh, covering Chapter 13, which is Operational Management, uh, focusing on operational dimension. How do we actually maintain and run an effective store? You know, talk about layout, talk about credit, talk about uh, 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 scramble merchandising, talk about theft, talk everything, the security for the store, location, displays. So this is going to be an interesting uh, uh, chapter when we get down to it, okay? All right, so you already read the book. We already discussed this in class. This is just a quick overview, uh, a summarization of what you already had, just as a trigger. I already planted the seeds in a discussion board or in, a, in the classroom, so you'll do well. So this is going to be, I'm going to go quickly. I'm going to try to keep this underneath a half an hour, maybe 40 minutes. Uh, for those who need a traditional type of uh, lecture, so I'm going to increase the size here so you can see it. I'm going to go to uh, uh, 200. Okay, so this is everything we're going to be talking about. And I will try to move along. Okay, here we go. All right, learning objectives. What are you going to learn out of this chapter? Or what did you already learn? Or what seeds you saw? Man, I didn't think about that. Aspect of operating a, a, a retail business. You got to look at the blueprint. We're going to talk about the blueprint uh, for the store format. We're going to look about the size of the store, depending on what you're selling. Is it a boutique? Is it a, a middle-sized store? Is it a supermarket? We're going to look at how much space you're going to need. We're going to look at personal uh, personnel utilization, how you, uh, how you utilize the people that you hire, that they're interactive and communicating properly and selling uh, 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 promoting your brand and selling the integrated marketing uh, message that you, we've talked about in earlier chapters. How do you maintain the store so it's clean? Are you going to outsource? Are you going to do it yourself? Energy management. Come on, costs are high. If I can reduce the cost of my uh, uh, expensive employees, good employees at a fair uh, cost, uh, uh, utilizing the space effectively, utilizing the right energy, lighting, how much lighting do I need, uh, uh, the, the retrofitting with maybe LED bulbs or whatever, or a cogeneration, anything you're looking at it to bring the cost down. If I bring the cost down, I keep more profitability, or I can reduce the cost of my, um, uh, for lack of better words, uh, 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 my uh, product or service, okay? Inventory management. Remember, we buy the inventory six months to eight months in advance and tying up the, uh, your your goods and all that inventory that you may not be able to see for six months. You got to make sure I have just enough inventory to take care of my uh, sales, my needs, but I have uh, not too much inventory where it becomes obsolete, stolen, or uh, destroyed. Security issue, not only from theft, but also that people don't get hurt, that they feel safe coming to your establishment, and uh, insurance. Uh, is basically risk management, for lack of a better word. Do I give my own credit? Do I use MasterCard Visa or, or somebody else's credit? That's like an outsourcing. How much computerization do I have? Do I have uh, social media? And where they're talking about computerization is when in the store, uh, point of purchase. Make sure I have everything they need. You know, maybe I have a, a sign that changes or something that uh, uh, my customers or, or consumers could interact with when they come in there. So may eliminate the salesperson or uh, while he or she's working, but it gives them enough information that they could say, okay, they don't have this in stock, why bother? Or maybe I could order online after I see it. And then outsourcing and crisis management. What happens uh, if something happens in the store? And crisis management is basically you're looking at it, how to protect the brand, how to protect the image of the store, okay? All right, so let's go into operational uh, management. Uh, all operational management, if you're taking me for strategic management, other classes that Harper offers, or if you've taken other classes, or you're working in as a store. Operational management, how effective and efficient I utilize my resources. Basically economics, 101 or 102. Macro or micro. I got a resource, make sure I get the most out of that resources. Okay? Now, the next one we're going to talk about, the link, uh, and this is just a site. Now, I'm not going to do it. We talked it in there. It gives you how a digital store to accommodate uh, Generation Z, Generation Y, uh, consumers, or even baby boomers as myself. How do I accommodate them to make them uh, uh, think that the store is current, all right? Now, you're going to make, a, you have to make some decisions as a manager or an owner, an entrepreneur of your store. So 
I, I broke this down. I had it all in the one, but it was kind of uh, cumbersome and long. The author broke it down nicely. Remember, make sure you utilize the book behind me. Uh, read the book. It's an e-book or a hard copy. I don't care. Uh, and these videos reinforce what we've discussed or what you've read. Remember, the more senses you utilize, the better understanding you have and a better, a, a higher probability of retention in your not only long term but short term memory. So you know the, uh, what you're looking at or discussing it when you see it while you're running your operation. Okay, so here's your decision uh, What operating guidelines are used? You know, what's the operating? What time do you open up? What happens? This happens. What is the optimal size of the store? You don't have to store too big because you're paying for room, uh, even if you're looking for expansion. So I have this section I want to expand. Maybe, you know, if you're expanding four or five years, a little different. Utilize that section. Maybe you keep more inventory in there. Maybe you do something with that section. Don't let it or rent out that section until your store grows. You know, a store within the store. You have to make sure I have this space. Am I using it? What am I going to do with it? Why do I need that space? Okay. Uh, how can personnel be matched to customers' traffic flow? Remember, you got the security cameras and everything else looking at that. Uh, okay, and now uh, how would uh, increased staffing improve or reduce? Uh, oops, we're getting all kinds of stuff. Technology, while I'm live here, you don't talk about it, works pretty good. Okay, would increased staffing improve? Uh, uh, would increase staffing improve or reduce productivity? Do I hire more people? Maybe I, I hire for, uh, part time or flexible time where I need them during my rush hours or my peak period. Other times, uh, and if I had the individual there, what do I have him or her do? Maybe do stocking or do some other stuff, but I don't have him to sit around and doing the social media, uh, utilize social media. Do something that an employee is earning his or her money, and then you could see a return in that investment. What impact does self service has in sales? Self service is good because customers don't have to wait in line, but they still want to talk to somebody. You could replace it maybe with uh, uh, some digital th uh, information. They could go right in the store and find out where the stuff is at or the merchandise is at, but you still need that face to face. You need that person to ask the right question. That's even on, online. Am I a robot? Robot just gives you that information. It's probably a robo call that's coming in here anyway. Okay, so now the second part of operational decision is how effective uh, uh, effect of various business material in the store maintenance. I don't want something that's going to be hard to clean, hard to maintain. I want to make it, but unless I need it for my customers, expect it. How often should a facility be renovated? And renovated means do I change the whole brand image? Remember, a lot of the main stores, Home Depot, they mentioned, or anything prototype, they're all the same. If I'm a small independent, do I want to change? I got a different clientele. I want to change my brand, rebrand myself. Or, you know, a renovation maybe just a nice paint job so it doesn't look dirty. Or move some of the furniture around, make it something different so people, ooh, well, why don't they change everything? Remember, but the customers get upset when you change too much. How can inventory be best managed? You don't want to, You need a safety stock, but you don't need more than you uh, will able to sell. Uh, as we will talk, as we talked in class, personal sa uh, safety of shoppers, employees, uh, uh, employees being insured. So I'm looking at not only the employees. I got to make sure they're safe, especially if they're working long hours. But customers, when they come in, consumers come in, do I have floodlights? Do I have cameras? Or do they feel safe? If I'm in an area, you know, some areas, like it or not, are not as safe as other areas, do I have a security person there? Just so I had that sense of uh, safety. Remember, none of us are really 100% safe. Anything can happen. But I minimize the risk. I give the perception that this is a safe place to come in and shop in my store. Okay? Then the other thing is operational decision. What levels of insurance do you need? You got to carry some insurance on your strips, even if it's not, you know, the because uh, you forgot something, your salesperson didn't clean the floor or just finished mopping while the customers are there and they slipped on it. Oh, geez, a lot of machines will mop, clean, and pick up the water. But some areas that come in there is pretty slippery. You're lucky. Someone gets hurt, they can sue you because it's negligence on your part. This is uh, at least what the lawyer are going to say. How can credit transaction be uh, managed? If I'm looking at the uh, credit uh, transfer uh, 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 operations uh, effectively, you know, a lot of people use MasterCard, Visa, Discover, a little bit higher, I got to pay a little bit more. 
if they, I have majority of my people using, I'll, I'll do it. But I try to, uh, you know, I think Costco says you only could use Visa, no MasterCard. So the limited amount, and now the and by that thing, I get a better deal from the Visa or the company that's sponsoring that because I'm going to say, hey, you're our preferred uh, credit holder, but you have to have a credit card company that we will accept, but you have to make sure that the majority of your customers are able to have it. And most of them have Visa or MasterCard. Okay, uh, what kind of crisis management in case something happens, the store goes on fire, or you have a, a, a right uh, uh, customer. How do you protect not only employees, but other uh, uh, customers that are in that store, okay? Now, operating a retail uh, uh, business, you gotta have a bl blueprint where my stores laid out. And you could look at other stores, look at your competitors, how do you lay, uh, 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 utilize it. And, you know, and uh, your own gut feeling, ah, I don't like the way they have the aisles here, I like a little bit bigger aisle. You know, uh, I sat at a uh, shop at Sam's and Costco. So you have a person who always does the clothing because they want to get that warehouse feeling. But man, I want one site. I go through the whole thing, all messed up. Somebody else is going, oh, I'm going to go in there. It's all messed up. Could you have it by size? Could you have bends? Cost you more, but doesn't it takes away from the image that Costco or Sam's want that warehouse image. So you pay, so you offset it, but you have a person that's all they do is just fold them back on, fold them back up, fold them back on. But that's a cost. But the cost is justified because it makes the store look clean. It makes new people look at the merchandise. It's still presentable. And okay, so I've got that. Uh, utilize the right person at the right time. You have enough people. Maintenance, do you do it or do you outsource it? Inventory uh, uh, management, insurance and credit, everything we talked about, okay? Now, the operation bl uh, blueprint and blueprint systematically lists all the functions. What has to be done in the store, what time, how often you clean the bathrooms, how often do you restock the merchandise, how, how many people are on the floor, and retail specifics, and uh, uh, you know, what time you open, what time, you know, look, I'm uh, there, you open at 9 o'clock, you see those people, and of course, one minute, pounding on the door. Make sure you have somebody there. A small business store, if you're not there, you could lose that sale. Could be that one customer is going to buy a big amount, but he or she's there, and no one comes in until 10 o'clock. I'm upset. I may not utilize your service. You have to have controls on that. Okay, uh, and they talked about some uh, uh, advantages. It's standardized. It isolates points at which operation may be weak. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe you have two people who have key holders that if one comes in, if or he or she's late, somebody else is always there, okay? Sure. And it, it, remember, it depends on the size of the store. It depends how many customers come in. But if you have a sign that says 8 to 10, you have to be there to that time. Your customers may be there the last 10 minutes. They drive all the way there. Oh, I'm going to make it. And you're already closed. Upset. It happened with the UPS store. They closed uh, around the holidays. I was really upset. I didn't go out there for another six months because upset with them. Hey, I came in there, and they had 10 minutes, and they all uh, they, they left early because it was slow. But I don't care if it's slow. You have your hours. Maintain it, okay? All right, now you got elements of operation and blueprint. If I'm looking at customer's actions, uh, uh, uh Customer steps taken as part of the service delivery. You see McDonald's and everything else. That's for the outsource. They don't have their own McDonald's guy driving around. They have a, 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 they pay for a service, either Uber or Lyft or somebody else. They're already driving. They may pick it up for some extra cash. Not as much as a customer, but they have it. Or they have actually uh, uh, service deliveries in the area. Okay, uh, on stage visible contact, face-to-face. -face. Those employees have to be trained how to deal with good customers, bad customers, and how to deal with irate customers, but also how to approach a customer in a manner that he or she feels respected. He or she feels that a hey, this person is really genuine. I teach sports marketing class, and you could tell the difference between salespeople when you go in there. Some are helpful, some, oh, man, what do you want, sir? Oh, yes, sir, I'm glad you came in. Yeah, let me find it. I'll look it up there. That's the person that's energetic, helpful, I'll come back. Because you say, well, you know, you call up and complain. Well, George is like that. You hire George. Get rid of George. Just uh, saying that. Okay, backstage employee action. You know, not face-to-face. -face. You know, uh, how do I keep uh, in the back, you know, that I have the inventory on time, that I make sure the packaging ain't broken. If I need some kind of assistance to come out there to help you load or find something, I have that response. And support process is... Uh, Function to carry out critical, uh, uh, carrying out the services. I may have to have some support, 
uh, uh, personnel, depending on your product, depending on your store, depending on your site. It's only me. I don't have no support. And some people understand. I'm the only owner. I'm a sole proprietor. It's my little business. Please, I'm working with. I'm trying to hire someone else, but I'm not making enough profitability now. You don't want me to raise the rate? No, George, you're fine. Okay. Now, physical evidence. When I look at physical evidence, uh, uh, tangible things that customer sees and are exposed to during a contact while they're in the store. So bathrooms are clean, the floors are clean, that's sloppy. The store, the atmosphere looks like clean. It looks something like I would want to buy the product. Cause if it looks raggedy, ding, even the price is low, is you know, oh my God, what else is wrong with this place, okay? And they had a, a blueprint here, and the book did a nice job on that, all right? Now, how big of a store are you going to need? All right. A lot of stores are prototyped. You start off, when you start off your store, you have a thing. So once you start expanding to a franchise, uh, as a franchise or as more franchisees, or you open other stores, you, unless you're changing that image, unless you're changing the brand, people are custom. When I go to Walmart, I know this is on this side, this is on this side, pharmacies in the middle. Same thing when I go to Home Depot. I, kn I understand the layout. Any Home Depot I go to, they're like uh, 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 prototypes. They're all the same. So if they change anything else, Target's going through a changing, if you've noticed, but they're changing slowly. So now I know the new Target. I go to the old Target. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. How did I go? You know what I mean? And they're changing it. So eventually all Targets are the same. So consumers, once they get used to it, same thing with Walmart. When they remodeled, re renovated the whole layout, I was upset. I didn't want to go to there because I didn't know where things at. They gave me a little list. Same thing with Jewel Asco that, you know, they were changing. But they're changing it to make it more intuitive and make it more acceptable with the consumer so he or she spends more and wants to come into the store because they like to look around they like to look and you know what i mean they feel comfortable shopping in that store versus your competitors okay multiple outlets same thing uh, uh rationale for a program centralized uh, management controls the marketing controls everything else you still leave some things for the local to take care of it depending on the market okay uh, different, uh, you know, reduces construction costs. Uh, uh, you have a, a procedure. The only uh, the other good thing about having standardization, if I have multiple stores and one store need, if somebody gets sick or anything else, I can move an employee there and he or she just a little bit. Uh, tweaking understands the process. They know how to use the register because everything's standard. Right? They know normally it's in this area. They have an idea how to set up. Maybe just adjust it because of the store, you know, where I brought it. I, I didn't custom build the store. I had to modify it. But overall, everything else is pretty standard. So I can move employees around when I promote them or if I need them for uh, when we talk uh, for emergencies. Okay? Strict alliance on prototype. Uh, failure to adapt or capitalize. Remember, the prototype store, once they're set up, customers are used to it, it's hard to change. It's like, this is my look, now I change. So I have to change everything. I'm going to dye my hair, make my makeup a little better. I don't have any makeup, I'm just kidding you. Okay? Top down space management. The retail starts with total available store, uh, store space and device spaces in the uh, categories. Management coming down and then works on the product layout. Bottom up space management, the same thing like this, only they let the stores, uh, here's the store, and they let them have some flexibility in how they design it, depending on the store, the layout. So it may be a little different, but I, but it, it works with that cult, uh, culture. Work, you know, some of the stores may have the uh, the clearance rack all the way in the back. Others may have it in the front, depending on the customers that come in. I'm in a high end uh, uh, area, all the way in the back. I want to buy the, uh, the the more costly stuff. If I'm in a, uh, a lower income area, I may have more the. Uh, Lesser expensive items up front and more the expensive items in the back. That's what the individual, that's what's going to bring them into the store. Okay, examples of prototype store. And they're basically you're talking McDonald's, Pep, Pep Boys, Office, Starbucks. It's all Starbucks are similar, except if you look at some of the older ones, like in Chicago. They're already there and they're, uh, they're there. You know, look at McDonald's, original McDonald's. Uh, I think it was in this plane. Here's the arches. Uh, you know, it has it's motivated, but it's still... The original one, where the other ones they've changed. You know, the big arches because of zoning and the adapted to the uh, clientele, and that's the new prototype. Okay, and then they talk about force, a focus on reducing costs everywhere. Always looking at it. How do I reduce the cost without affecting the customer's experience or the product or service experiences? Okay, 
And I'll start a maintenance decision. And then basically, when do I maintain it? When do I paint it? How do I do? You know, I don't want to be painting when customers are coming in. I do that off hour. I don't want to change out the lights. The bulbs are burned out. Do I just change one bulb or do I replace them all? So I, uh, it's more cost effective that way, especially if I have high ceilings. I got to bring special equipment to do that. Okay, again, this is, uh, 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 and this was just a, uh, what was this one? Oh, I already had that. Sorry, excuse me. Okay, maximizing the uh, productivity. Hiring process. I want to hire two candidates, and 10 come in there. I interview 10, I hire two. I keep the other eight instead of going back. Hey, they already had interest. They, were, they may not be in the top two, but just good enough when I come around the second time because I need uh, individuals or offer them a part-time or something else to bring them in there. You know, how's my training, my workforce uh, uh, forecast? I don't want to have 20 people. Look, I go into Home Depot a lot of time. Nothing against Home Depot. But all the people stand around at the self-service. Talking to you. Uh, you know, hello, George. Hello. Hey, get to work. Get out of here. When I'm in the middle of the store, that's why I want to find you. I don't want to find you in the front all talking about it. I'm out there. I'm looking for my paint. There's nobody there. I'm going here. Nobody there. I, I see them. They talk to me, but I can't. I got to look around for that individual. If you're going to have them all in one spot, we're going to dispatch them, have a button, have something I could contact them. And having them all stand up there makes me feel uncomfortable, especially when I couldn't find anything. Remember, how do you utilize that? Standardization across training. As I mentioned before, I could uh, move employees from one store to the other. Compensation, I try to pay them fair. If I don't pay them fair, employees will leave me for a dime. Not really a dime. A dollar fifty cents to someplace else and a loss of trained employee. You know, self-service, self-service. I could have one employee watching and, you know, he can't go. I'm gonna, you know, he's got his back jumped. They got cameras watching. So you're ripping them off to get you sooner or later. Now a lot of face recognition. They'll pick you up next time you come in. Okay, trust me. There's no way around it, but it saves time because I don't have to wait for the salesperson. I may be buying some personal item. I don't want this. Uh, I'm gonna come over here and I'm buying something and it's personal. I don't have to do it. I just self check out myself. Make sure I have the one person there if I need help to help me out. And length of employment. I want to keep them longer. Otherwise, I have to do a lot of retraining and it costs me money. Okay. Okay, inventory management. We talked about this in the finance. I'll bring it up. Handing merchandise from supplier to coordinator. How do I do that? How much inventory should I uh, carry? And remember, a lot of times when you look at uh, UP, uh, uh, UCP uh, label, uh, you know what I mean? Not too many acronyms. When I'm looking at that label, the scan them, now everything else is done with uh, chips. It's chips and all the clothes. Makes it easy. I just come in there, read a frequency. It already knows there. It tells me when uh, when something's sold. It lets the, uh, my distributor know, hey, I already sold these many shirts. Send them a replacement. You know, uh, a sales floor versus a, a warehouse or store uh, a storeroom. How often should inventory be moved in non-selling areas to in the back? And then we talked about the uh, uh, inventory turnover. Depends on the inventory. Depends what's going. A lot of times it's per season. If I can't get rid of it, I've already got the winter season. Right now we're coming summer stuff. Winter stuff, get rid of it. Will it stay last time? If you're wearing like Carhartt's. Or Doc, or certain things, or jeans, you know, Levi. They could store that for, you know, it goes all year round, but maybe a little heavier. I could store that for next year because the style doesn't change. You know what I'm talking about? Other stuff is out of style. It's no longer bell bottoms. I got stuck with it. I can't get rid of it next year because bell bottoms are out, straight legs are in, or uh, whatever, okay? What inventory functions can be done during the non store hours? That's usually stocking up. You know what I mean? You know, when I come in the store in the morning, I understand they're really doing the shelves. I'm there in the afternoon and they're doing the stocking. They got all that room. I'm upset. I got, oh my God, you got all this stuff in there. And I don't want to sound like a complaining customer because I am. And because I complain, I don't like it. How many of my customers say, oh man, not to this store? Every time I come in there, they're working. They're, they're in my way. I can't, you know, when they come and put inventory in, in somebody's store and they close off the whole aisle. And that's the aisle I want to get in there. And they're taking time. They're joking around. Go in there, put the stuff in, get the heck out of there. Let me as the customer come in there. Or do it in, uh, day, at times when it's not busy. You don't start stocking up the large thing during the rush hour or peak period. People are in there buying. That just upsets them. Okay? Remember, those things you got to think about as a store. Think of yourself, and then you what you don't like, most likely uh, uh, your consumers don't like it either. And you could ask. I have a survey of information. Or you look at your security cameras. Remember, security cameras are the eyes so people don't steal, but it also sees what happens and the faces of these people when they go, uh, and they're waiting and there's 10 minutes and they're joking around and they, you know put it up get out there 
Okay? I understand there's safety on that. All right. There are certain times, I understand you have to restock it, but make it restockable at a time when it's, your traffic is low. Okay? Uh, trade off between fast supplier and higher kish, uh, uh, shipping costs. Look, Amazon does it in two days. If I wanted to uh, tomorrow, I'd uh, pay the double. I always give them that option, or I do a regular thing. If I, you know, free shipping, it may say three, four days. I don't need it right away. Fine, but if I need it uh, earlier, I have that ability. Or if I buy so much, a uh, hundred dollars or fifty dollars free shipping, that encourages me to buy more inventory. Uh, not inventory, more the goods, because I want to. I said, man, it's going to cost me fifteen dollars to uh, to uh, ship it. Man, if I only spend twelve, uh, sixteen dollars, I get it for free, and I get another product. You got to look at the pricing. You got to think of how the customer thinks, how the customer he or she sees it. That's what you're doing with the store operation. Okay, what level of store merchandise uh, break is acceptable? You're going to have people dropping stuff. Don't charge them for everything. Like if I'm a glass thing and i got a kid just throwing stuff around, other issue. People make a mistake. They drop something. Am I going to get them out? Okay, I know there's going to be some breaking. My employees may drop something. Something may happen. You know, Something may fall out or bump into something and the whole rack goes down. It's not his or her fault. Maybe it was too tight and the person couldn't get around it. <clears throat> just like for theft, you have a certain percentage you know you're going to lose, you know you're going to have certain things that are going to be break, uh, breakable. How do I minimize that? Okay? Which items require customer deliveries when and where? A lot of the stores now, instead of having all the inventory there, they have warehouses. They find out if you buy the bigger items, people don't have trailers, they got little cars, uh, I'll deliver it and I'll, I'll do these things for free. This way I know it's delivered to you in one piece, it's not broken, not to say, oh, but it's a box, I don't know what happened. They'll set it up and that customer service brings people back. See, charge maybe a little bit higher. You're breaking up. But think of a return. So there's an, there's an offset. Remember to find it. There's an offset. How many people are returning items because it's broken or they dropped it or something else? Or if I install it, I have a return, a less return, less customer satisfaction, less uh, people upset with me. And that money is well worth it for me to ship it to them. Plus now my, war, my store is smaller. I don't need all that inventory. I just have a warehouse centrally located and they'll deliver it the next day and everything else. Okay, now the ABCs of inventory, and they go A goods, when they go A goods, A goods, I'm just kidding, the goods that never are out of stock, they come in there, I always got to have a stock, if I'm in there uh, in a hot dog, uh, I'm just going to use a hot dog, most of you already know I like hot dogs and pizza, I'm in there, you can't, what do you mean you're out of hot dogs? Your hot dog place, for goodness sake. Yeah, we ran out. Have more than enough. You got to have that. That's your main people coming in there. You know, now, be goods is basically niche goods, ample stock. You know, uh, I, I've got a certain portion that comes in. This is a niche, certain niche. Maybe people like uh, uh, yellow sock, but most people always buy black and white. So I'll have that little uh, niche in there. I run out of those in different sizes. You know, your debt and your wet, you know, uh, debt, how many different. Uh, 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 styles I have and your uh, what I mean different uh, sizes I have in there. Okay, ninety percent under demand. Remember, this is a hundred percent, ninety nine percent. You should never go out. Okay, and C goods are uh, filler goods. Order uh, uh, goods without customer resentment. Ample stock, seventy eight. You see, it, it depends how much inventory, uh, and this all depends on the number of people you're selling. You have to understand the accounting. You have to understand your inventory. You have to understand your customers. You have to understand how many are buying and which season. Look, if I'm buying something, a turkey, you know, they always got turkey, big deal. You know, sometimes they have a little bit. There's not a big demand for turkey. Thanksgiving, my goodness, you better have more turkey. Even if you're overstocked after turkey, they come in there because they can buy the turkey, they buy everything else they need it. You don't have that turkey or the size or the pounds they want, they're leaving you. So I have more. And then next time, look, I break even. I sell the turkey. I say, hey, I buy one, and I give it back to the customers. I still make money on this. Remember, it may, maybe not break even, a little bit uh, 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 higher price or lower price. I get rid of the inventory. People uh, will stock up on that. But I have to have it there, otherwise they'll leave me. Okay, now let's see. Uh, uh, 
product portfolioization, trust me, English second language for me, is basically how much products do I have? And, and, and here's what they're talking about. Aldi has overall, and these are the different products, different categories, uh, 1,400 versus uh, 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 Safeway, 30,052. Kroger's, those who are not familiar with Kroger, is similar to, I think there's a couple opening up, it's similar, and Kroger's basically uh, uh, purchased uh, uh, Mariano's, so you see more of their brand names coming into Mariano's, and you got a lot of uh, different discounts because you want to come out this way, but Kroger's is similar to like, uh, it's not only just like Mariano's, because Kroger's I could look at, uh, for lack of a better word, like a Walmart. And Walmart carries food, everything else, merchandise, but they're, they're just doing it the food industry, you get your foot in there, you know, and all these. I think they're comparing the, all of these with the food section on that, okay? Now, store security. Employees. Employees, uh, how do I uh, minimize that? Remember, employees and co consumer. Who steals more from me? My employees. They know my shortcomings. They know where the security is at. They know my security uh, uh, systems in place. So I got to make sure, limited uh, access to the back uh, 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 back areas where they could hide stuff or throw stuff out in the dumpster and later on come pick it up or have their friends pick it up. Locking up trash bins are always locked up because people throw it in there and later on, oh, I was just looking for the trash. I was looking for a box. Oh, I found a whole uh, a color TV. Uh, L Man, $20,000 TV. Did you? It still works. I didn't know that. Remember, employees... Is opportunity. I grew up in Chicago. They're not out there to steal from you, but uh, the opportunity is there. I may. Remember, do I have integrity or compliance? Most employees are in the compliance. Okay, now customers. Customers also are a little bit uh, uh, there. So I have certain curfews when you have like teenagers or something coming in. Electronic article sur uh, uh, surveillance. You got all kinds of things. I take out the one thing. I think, okay, no security. So if the bells go out, have somebody approach a customer. If I know if the bells goes off, alarm, and no one ever comes, hey, go ahead, mister, go ahead. Hey, I'm going to start taking big stuff out of there. You have to have a process and remember, you're trying to keep you. You people are gonna steal. They're gonna find ways to steal it. I want to minimize it. Minimize it. I don't want to encourage it. I want to make sure that if they get caught, that there's a higher percentage that they're gonna get caught. There's, you know, you got all these uh, red light cameras out there, looking at how the city's doing it. Okay, I'm, I'm not that I don't speed. Not that I don't do California. Uh, stop. I stop and say red light. Okay, I got to stop. 30 seconds, 60 seconds, whatever. Then I go on. What it does is just minimize it. But sometimes I forget that, right? You're minimizing your exposure. You're minimizing the, uh, the, the, the amount that may be stolen or something else. Okay, uh, prosecute offenders. Hey, uh, I may give you a first time warning. Depends, you know, he's a little shoplifting, a little uh, teenager, a little thing. I said, don't come in the store. I've got you on my cameras, and I got face recognition. Come in there. I'm going to uh, prosecute you, and then I'm going to also tell the local newspaper arrested for shoplifting, innocent till guilty. Boom, and your name's on there. You don't want that, all right? I have to have that. I, you know, what I mean, so you got to uh, uh, give him a break. Be sensitive. Depends on what happened. You don't want him to steal, but you, you know, also a customer, got a friend. But then you don't want this repeat person coming in there if he's walking off with a, a whole cart. A little different. Yeah, what did I do? I stood, oh, I forgot a, a box of razor blades versus someone that's taking out a whole cart. You have to have some policies. You have to be able to use some gentle, judgmental uh, uh, discernment, for lack of a better word. Freaking bank deposits, you know what I mean? Don't keep all the money at one time. Uh, you know, you deposit or you, you pick it up. You know, I do something instead of, I got a busy day and a holiday, I'll do maybe three different bank deposits. Coming in there, you know, you know, come in there, here's a bank deposit. They come in, a, in an envelope, a suitcase, they walk out, they deposit, they come back in. Don't make it so obvious. I'm walking out with bags that says dollars, you know what I mean, to the bank. You have a little, uh, a man's bag or a, uh, or a backpack. You put the stuff in, you know, the manager, he's, he's going home. And then he goes to the bank or she goes to the bank. Use your common sense. People are watching you. You don't know which customers are good, which customers are bad. You don't know what employees looking at say, man, or telling their friends, you know, and man, we have a lot of money at the end. They don't have all that money. Or they have the safety deposit box where the armored trucks come in and picks it up at certain times. If you have more than 200 bucks in the cash, I don't touch it. It's not me. It belongs to Wells Fargo, Citibank, Bank of America, uh, uh, Brinks, whoever comes and picks it up. Okay? Depends who you get the best deal at. 
and employees and customers. You want to keep them safe. Uniform security guards, undercover personnel, and TV cameras and devices so you know what you want. And when you look at undercover personnel, you'd be surprised. If you think you're stealing, it's not going to come up there if somebody's coming up in a uniform I'm of security. They're going to steal. It's going to be somebody pushing a card like myself. And then I'm a security person. I see, I see, I record. I got glasses I record, and I see your action. You don't expect me because I'm not the obvious. Now, employees know who they are, or sometimes you walk back and you see them in the security. Oh, man, I see that lady all the time in there. Doesn't she ever go home? She's a security. She may not arrest you, but she's the one watching and has somebody else arrest you. Or she may arrest you. You know, a lot of them are very well trained. Okay, and now you're looking at insurance issues. Your uh, cost of premium is going on. That could be uh, health, uh, uh, unemployment insurance or something gets hurt on there. If you're insurers, uh, servicing retailers, the risk are there. People are always going to sell. They fall down. They and, and, and you know if it's your fault, pay for it. But if they're just like scammers, if people are going to scam, there's people who move stuff around. I got to have insurance for loss. I got to have insurance for uh, some kind of threats or anything else. Or if uh, I'm short on the register, or whatever you know you have the insurance to protect your business how much make sure it makes sense for your operation that you're you you're insured enough to keep your business going in case of something would happen retailers have embarked a number of costly costs and basically you know non-slip carpeting rubber uh, entrance mat frequent mopping and inspection of floors has got to be with the machine otherwise you're mopping and even got the little things people who they don't pay attention you walk kids run through slip and fall so do those things offline unless it's winter time you just get rid of the snow uh, or the water you squeeze it or have a machine that sucks it, uh, 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 brings it up so you should be all right elevator and escalator maintenance checks you don't want anyone to get hurt on that regular fire drills uh, building fire resistant material is it a fire how does uh, uh, how do you stop it I had fire extinguishers around do your employees know how to put out a fire do your employees know the different types of fire ABC you know some are more combustible some are not different kind of a, a, a uh, a fire extinguisher a lot of them are set up for abc so they'll, they'll be able to put out all kind of fire they didn't know how to do it so it doesn't spread the fire yes it hit it at the base little things like this is what you have to think about that your employees are aware of it so they know they got pulled the pin it's not working i pulled the pin dude or do this all right uh safety and employee training so you're talking about safety and employees and keeping records and showing uh proper maintenance activity and it's just my alarm usually i'd be uh teaching a class at this time uh, just, uh, so uh, I had a day off today, so I was uh, working around that. I haven't changed it, uh, the clock on that. Okay, uh, let's see. Types of insurance. We go without business and interruption. You know, there's a, a, a and look uh, if they're redoing the road. I lost my customer. So I said, okay, here's for the last year, uh, two years, here's my income that I should be making. If it drops, not because I got junky material, because something that's environmental outside I can't control, the city's going to do the roads. They're going to tear it up for a year. So I'm covered for that. You know, uh, life insurance pay estate uh, to buy partners out. If you have a partner, or somebody else in there, if he or she dies, I'm going to get someone else to replace him. Or, uh, you know, I get another partner and he did half of this work. Now what am I going to do? Who does that section of the work? Cross training. Disability insurance is something that's uh, more for the top executive owner. If I got hurt, I can't come in there. Or maybe some of my key employees. I want them, you know, I want to keep them back because if uh, they got hurt and they're a good employee, I want to say, okay, I know you're off of work. You pay a little bit more. I'm paying a little bit more, but you'll be able to stay home and still get a pay and uh, then come back here because you're one of my better employees. Flood and fire insurance and liability insurance. Okay, now credit card decision. What form of credit card is acceptable? Master Visa card, or you can issue your own uh, in-store credit. When uh, the economy went down, it was harder for people to get the uh, MasterCard Visa, and, you know, the regular typical uh, insurance card. So I may have to do inside, you know, layaway and everything else. More of a risk. The reason a lot of stores, especially small and medium, even larger stores, a lot of larger stores like Kohl's or something else, they try to push their credit card because they're charging you uh, a higher interest rate than you could do on your own because they're making the money on the compound interest you're late they're making money you know what i'm talking about and what do you find out that people buy more uh, with a credit card than if they have cash you don't have so much cash and i gotta admit to that i gotta watch myself i'm in the same boat i teach this stuff oh geez i got a credit card paid the next time and something else comes up and i just pay the interest on that 
Not good. I teach fine guys. Not good. All right. But good for the co me from a store is good for them because they're buying. But as a you know, so you got that uh, the balance you're looking at. But now here's the thing: if I uh, accept Mastercard, Visa, even Discover, and American Express, I don't really care. They buy in credit, or I get them to buy. They buy it. You gotta buy it now. It's not gonna be a sale tomorrow. You know, not to force them, to persuade them, to motivate them, to encourage them to purchase. Now they purchase that. Okay, so they go and they go home. Two months later, they they delayed on a payment. They're mad at Mastercard. Damn bankers, those damn establishments, those money hungry financial companies. They do not connect that bill with my store. Where if I have my own credit card company my own credit like Kohl's or something else if I'm late they're upset with the store they may not come back to that store man they're always after me I buy all this stuff and look what they're doing send me all these notices do you see what I mean so it's a disconnect but you have to see what works out for you okay and how are late payments or non-payments that you handle if you're doing it with MasterCard Visa you don't have to worry about that you pay that service charge so when you're paying that service charge that burden is pushed on to the banks or to the credit card company, it's not my thing. As long as the credit's good and they got money and it's approved, I'm set. Unless it's a, 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 a what do you call it, a theft or anything else or something else that somebody sold the credit card, then it's a little issue. But that's a smaller percentage than me doing the whole operation. Okay, now, excuse me, computerization, point of purchase. Like it or not, uh, when I do a point of purchase, it records, it gives me inventory control, it goes to uh, 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 QuickBooks, that also does my accounting for small business, it goes to Peachtree or your uh, legacy uh, uh, accounting system. I don't have to do that. It's all done. P puts in the right back, uh, buckets, puts in the right journal, right transaction, gives me a trial balance. I still, even though if I do everything computerized and scanning everything else, I still need a person to check to see who stole it. Is the inventory on the computer reflect the inventory of the, uh, the store. Because, you know, the computer can, can't tell you if it was stolen or it was misplaced or uh, it was returned and I had more or I don't have enough or I sent something out. You need that check and balance, okay? And then, uh, let's see what else we have in here. Related software to little more small firms will use computerized, will computerize, and they're already there. You can't buy, even a register, you can't buy the old type of register unless you have the box. Everything's all done electronically. It makes sense. It all automatically, people scan it, it, it does the inventory. Even if it's a small store, does the inventory. It's just one less body I have to look at because they'll basically uh, tell me how much inventory I have and do my spot check. In computerized checkouts, that all happens. Uh, uh, firms use uh, UPC, UPS. I was thinking about uh, the, the thing or the uh, SPS uh, 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 plugs in here. So it's, uh, you know, chips and clothing, uh, radio frequency. I don't even need to scan it. I just have to be in the area and they'll tell me. Helps me on my return. I return it and they go, they scan up. Oh, this, word, this inventory was not mine. It must belong to my competitor, but it's not registered with me. I you didn't buy this here. Otherwise, it's a similar shirt. I just don't have the receipt. And, okay, I'll give it to him. You know I mean? Do you see what I mean? Now it's all in here. It's all uh, embedded in your clothing. Okay, and per, uh, point of purchase. And outsourcing. When do I outsource? More retailers doing outsourcing. And outsourcing. Do I uh, do my own advertising, marketing? I outsource it. They're better. Uh, you know, stuff that I used to do before. You know, social media. You know, at nighttime, if I have 24 hour service, I may contract out to another person or someone who's at home. You say, I'm at home. I take the calls. You got the computer. You got any kind of returns. I could talk to the person. I don't have to be there. I pay for a service. Hello, this is George's uh, uh, store. And it could be, and they could have, they could see the number coming in. It's a customer calling in from George's. Uh, uh, number that I gave them and here's another one from Sally's number and so they could just change your message depending on an individual and I'm saving money on that one. Goals to reduce costs and, uh, and time uh, devoted to particular tasks. What do you want to do? Uh, where do you want to uh, save at? Remember if it's anything to do with a customer interaction you want to keep it in house. You don't want to have a, a contractor doing it for you. But you have to make that decision. Do I do my own cleaning or do I bring somebody to come in here? Do I wash my own windows or I pay $10 a month and somebody comes in here uh, uh, twice a week and cleans the windows for me? Easier. I have to get the material. They'll do a nice job. 
uh, right? And I don't have to use my employee on that. I can keep him or her utilizing what I want to make the sales and, and on that. Okay. Now, crisis management is a contingency plan dependent crisis, earthquake, fire, flood, uh, the, whatever. Essential information uh, should be communicated to all uh, uh, parties as soon as a crisis occurs to let the other stores know there's something going on. Uh, uh, cooperation, not conflict with employees. Uh, responses should be prompt as possible. Uh, chain of command, if something happens, there's a fire, or uh, I could uh, relate that real quickly. Smaller story, you kind of know, but you have to be able to manage it. If there's a fire, my store goes down because of flooding. I had the emails I sent out to my customers, sorry, we're going to be closed for the next two days because of flooding. We'll fix it up. We'll notify you through email right off the bat. See, I'm managing the crisis I can't control, but I'm also not getting the customer or uh, people that utilize my service to figure out why hasn't he or she called back, okay? And in examples of crisis, here, uh, a hurricane, tornado, flood, no electricity, no heat, product recall, private labels, loss of important goods due to incapacity uh, uh, of key supply source. You know, it could be a strike with UPS. I don't get the delivery or the warehouse or the plane crash or the warehouse uh, has some issues and they can't uh, send me the, uh, my supplies in time. All right, I think I covered it all. I think I'm a little bit over. Let me just bring this over real quickly. I'm going to do the view. Let me just go in here. Ah, remember, I'm live. Those who uh, have me before, you already know. Oops, I'm sorry, wrong one. Cancel. Technology. All right, uh, expand to level one, and then view, basically fit the map. So we covered all this. This is how you run the store. The key of this, you know, you, we went through a lot with this, uh, uh, you know, in chapter 13. I think there's like five more chapters. This is everything you need for retail merchandise, whether you're an entrepreneur, small business owner, a department head, assistant manager, or in a corporate looking at your stores. This is a good foundational class, what all stores should look at, how you design it, makes it, and remember, you design it to satisfy the needs of your consumers and to make them comfortable when they come into the store that it works what they're looking for. Remember, if I'm in a dollar store, I don't care about that as long as I don't get hurt. That stuff is all over, but I'm looking for the lowest cost. If I'm in a higher-end store, I want to have the store nicely. I want to have more room. I want to have the personnel there when I can ask the questions. You pay what you get for it. Look at the Walmart and Target. I shop at both. Walmart costs a little lower. may not find all the employees that you want all the time. Target pays a little bit more, a little more employees on, on the floor, helping me out, but you're paying a higher cost than that. All right? So, again, my name is Dr. George Machaki. This is Marketing uh, 106. This is uh, Retail Merchandising slash Management. Uh, we're in Chapter 13. Look at management and operations of a retail store or a, a, a service or a process. Uh and we're looking, we, we talked about all the different uh, things, the layout, the window, the credit, everything you need to operate the store effectively and so you're not wasting money, but you're responsive enough and flexible enough to meet your customers' uh, expectations. All right, and I'll see you in Chapter 14. It'll be coming up a little bit. Bye. All right, let's see how many minutes I have. 46 minutes. Eh, a little over. But I, wanna, I always try to do it at 40. I used to make these an hour and a half. I'll keep on uh, quit talking, otherwise I'll hit it at 50. Again, thank you again for signing up at Harper College. Uh, look me up. Uh, uh, I teach a variety of classes. Or go to a community college. You get the best uh, uh, bang for your money. Bye.